Two weeks ago we had discussed and journeyed through a remarkable hadith known as the Hadith of Ukashah, where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had informed the Sahaba with regards to 70,000 plus Muslims who will be given access to paradise on the day of standing without any prior reckoning or punishment. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a description of who they are saying هُمُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَكْتَوُونَ وَلَا يَتَطَيَّرُونَ وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ He said they are people who don't ask for ruqya and they don't cauterize themselves. They don't follow bad omens and upon Allah they rely. After the khutbah, a beautiful sincere brother, insha'Allah ta'ala, came and he said, I want to be one of these 70,000 people. So I will no longer ask anybody to read Ruqya upon me. And I will not cauterize myself and I will not follow bad omens. But the aspect of tawakkul, the fourth element of relying solely upon Allah, I am not entirely sure what that entails. So therefore, as a continuation from that khutbah, and in order to address myself aloud, for I know for a fact that I myself need to remedy and rectify and repair my tawakkul upon Allah more than anybody else, allow me to speak to myself aloud as we address the topic of tawakkul, reliance upon Allah. Allah Almighty says to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْعَزِيزِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلَّذِي يَرَاكَ حِينَ تَقُومِ وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Allah said to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Place your trust in Allah who is the most mighty, who is the most merciful the one who sees you when you stand up in prayer and he sees your movement when you prostrate. Indeed, he is the all-knower and he is the all-hearer. However, does this mean that tawakkul, reliance upon Allah Almighty is a command that is exclusive to our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And the answer is no, because Allah Ta'ala says in no less than seven ayat of the Qur'an, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Upon Allah let the believers rely. So we are also commanded by Allah to rely upon Him and place our trust in Him Azza wa Jal. Therefore we ask, what is the ruling of tawakkul to begin? Let us pave the way by understanding the magnitude of the topic at hand. Is tawakkul, placing your trust in Allah, supererogatory? voluntary, something that is merely optional, or is it something greater than that? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, فَإِنَّ التَّوَكُّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَاجِبٌ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ وَاجِبَاتِ الدِّينِ كَمَا أَنَّ الْإِخْلَاصِ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى وَاجِبْ وَقَدْ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِالْ تَوَكُّلِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ فِي غَيْرِ آيَةٍ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ أَعْظَمْ مِمَّا أَمَرَ بِالْوُضُوءِ وَالْغُسْلِ He said that tawakkul, reliance upon Allah, is one of the most important obligations of, of Islam. And Allah Almighty has mentioned it numerously in the Qur'an and He has emphasized it the same way that sincerity is emphasized. He says tawakkul was more emphasized and mentioned more frequently than the topic of wudu and ghusl. Tawakkul, we are speaking about an obligation. Let us first ask, what is the meaning of the term tawakkul linguistically and Islamically? Linguistically, the scholars of Lugha language, they say, At-tawakkul huwa al-i'timadu ala al-ghayri fi amrin ma. Tawakkul, which is the term that we're going to use today, is when a person depends upon another individual with regards to a particular matter. When you place your trust upon another individual, upon or for a particular matter. However, as per the Islamic definition of tawakkul, i.e. the tawakkul that Allah wants from us and will take us to paradise without reckoning and without punishment, here comes the definition. Tawakkul, as Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali mentions in his book, Jami'ul Ulumi wal-Hikam, he says at tawakkul, 
هو صدق اعتماد القلب على الله في جلب المصالح ودفع المضار من أمر الدنيا والآخرة He says tawakkul the Islamic definition is when the heart of a Muslim truly places its trust upon Allah when wanting good for itself or warding of harm from itself with regards to the affairs of dunya and the hereafter. And a second definition comes from Al-Jarjani in his book at Ta'rifat. He said, At-tawakkul huwa al-thiqatu bima inda Allahi wal ya'su mimma fi aydin nas. He said, At-tawakkul. It is to be confident and to want that which Allah possesses and to be totally disinterested in what the hands of people possess. To want that which is with Allah. Therefore, we see from these definitions, my brothers and sisters, that the concept of tawakkul, it's not something that is done physically by the limbs. But rather it is min a'mal al It is one of the actions of the heart. Therefore, therefore, a person may buy and sell and move and travel and shift and move and do all sorts to attain something he wants from the halal of dunya or the akhirah whilst he is still a person of tawakkul because tawakkul is something that sits in the heart when the heart is completely attached to Allah Almighty. Therefore, Imam Al-Tirmidhi he narrates in his Sunan on the authority of Anas that a man came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and he said, Ya Rasul Allah أَعْقِلْهَا وَأَتَوَكَّلْ أَوْ أُطْلِقْهَا وَأَتَوَكَّلْ يَعْنِ النَّاقَةِ قَالَ اِعْقِلْهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ He said, O oh Messenger of Allah, my camel, should I tie it and place my trust upon Allah? Or should I leave it untied and place my trust upon Allah? The Messenger وسلم, said, no, tie it. Do what you need to do. Tie it and then place your trust upon Allah. And a similar meaning is found in Sahih al-Bukhari on the authority of Ibn Abbas, who said, كَانَ أَهْلُ الْيَمَنِ يَحُجُّونَ وَلَا يَتَزَوَّدُونَ وَيَقُولُونَ نَحْنُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ فَإِذَا قَدِمُوا مَكَّةَ سَأَلُوا النَّاسِ فَأَنْزَنَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى He said the people of Yemen, when they would go to Mecca to carry out their pilgrimage, they would not carry with them any luggage. And they would not take with them any belongings or provisions. And they would say, we have placed our reliance upon Allah. We are people of tawakkul. We don't need luggage. He says, but the moment they get to Mecca, they start asking favors from people, food and drink from people. So Allah Almighty, He revealed the verse when He said, take provisions. Take provisions. Tazawwadu. And the greatest of all provisions is taqwa, fear of Allah. But take provisions. Therefore, a Muslim is to capitalize upon every means that Allah has made halal to attain the good of dunya or the good of akhirah. And this does not contradict tawakkul, as Imam al-Shatibi, he said. It does not contradict tawakkul. Rather, it is part of tawakkul. Even if these means seem to be very ineffective and small, you may say, Ya Akhi, my CV is very weak, and my wealth is very little, and my efforts are very small. You have to take the means if you want your tawakkul to be complete, whilst your heart is completely attached to Allah. Therefore, we see when Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam, he became ill, and he asked Allah for relief, Allah gave him relief. But what did he say? Urkud bi rijlik. Allah said to him, you want the cure? Kick the earth with your foot. Kick the earth with your foot. A little spring of water will come out. Drink from it and wash your body. You will become cured. Why did he need to kick the earth? Allah Almighty could have caused the water to come out without requiring the ill man to kick the earth. And how strong will be the impact of the kick of an ill man? It will be weak. But Allah Almighty is sending a very powerful message for you and I. We need to do our part. We need to do our bit. And Allah Almighty's assistance will come after that. This is part of tawakkul. Similarly, Maryam alayhi salam, after she had just given birth and she was hungry and thirsty, Allah Almighty said to her, Allah said to her, Shake the trunk of the palm tree, fresh and ripe dates will come down, eat from it. 
Why did she need to shake it? Allah Almighty could have caused the dates to fall on her without the need to shake it. And how strong will be the shaking of a woman to a tree that 10 men can't move? Uh, but Allah is sending a message. You have to do your part should your tawakkul be complete. Take the means necessary, send your CV, buy and sell. Do what you can to draw closer to Allah, attend the lectures, even if you see them as insignificant. Whilst your heart knows very well that it is only Allah that allows matters to matter and allows material to materialize. Your heart is only connected to the Creator. This is part of tawakkul. There are certain circumstances that a Muslim needs to place his trust in Allah more than others. A Muslim is to plug tawakkul in his endeavor to achieve everything pertaining to the good of dunya and akhirah. However, there are certain circumstances where a Muslim needs to have extra reliance upon Allah, as was mentioned by al fayruz Abadi and others. And he mentions a few of them and I will quote, I will quote seven. The first circumstance where a Muslim needs to have extra tawakkul upon his creator and ensure that his reliance upon Allah is full when you exit from your home. When you exit from your home, know very well that Allah is going to assist you to fulfill your good endeavors. As Abi Dawood narrates in his Sunan on the authority of Anas, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا خَرَجَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ فَقَالَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ يُقَالُ لَهُ كُفِيتَ وَبُقِيتَ وَهُدِيتَ وَتَنَحَّى عَنْهُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَيَقُولُ لَهُ شَيْطَانٌ آخَرْ كَيْفَ لَكَ بِرَجُلٍ هُدِيَ وَبُقِيَ وَكُفِي The Messenger وسلم, says, when a man goes out from his house, he should say the following dua, memorize it. Bismillah, I place my trust upon Allah, and there is no power and strength except in Him. If a person says this, it will be said to him, you shall be protected, and you shall be defended, and you shall be guided. And shaitan then moves away from him. And then shaitan will say to another shaitan, how can we deal with a person who has been guided and defended and protected? So the first circumstance where tawakkul is emphasized more than any other time is when you leave your home. The second circumstance is the moment you struggle financially. When you are struggling with your wealth, with your business, with your income, Allah wants to see from you tawakkul more than any other time. As At-Tirmidhi narrates in his Sunan, on the authority of Ibn Mas'ud, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَن نَزَلَتْ بِهِ فَاقَةٌ فَأَنزَلَهَا بِالنَّاسِ لَمْ تُسَدَّ فَاقَتُهُ وَمَن نَزَلَتْ بِهِ فَاقَةٌ فَأَنزَلَهَا بِاللَّهِ يُوشِكُ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِرِزْقٍ عَاجِلٍ أَوْ آجِلٍ He says that whoever is struck with poverty and then he seeks relief from people, relief will not come to him. But whoever is struck with poverty and he seeks relief from Allah, tawakkul, from Allah, the Prophet says, relief will come to him sooner or later. This is the second situation where a Muslim's tawakkul needs to be strong. The third is when people turn away from you. You are a practicing individual, alhamdulillah, upon the sunnah, you want to pray in the masjid and call to the path of Islam, enjoying good and forbid evil. People, rather than assisting you, they start turning away from you. Place your trust in Allah and continue. Allah says, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا If they turn away from you, فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ Allah. Say, Allah is enough for me. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ None has the right to be worshipped except Him. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتْ I have placed my trust in Him. وَهَوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ And He is the Lord of the Great Throne. The fourth of these scenarios or circumstances where your tawakkul needs to be spot on is when you turn away from certain people, the enemies of Islam. You and I know that there are certain people who are bad influence upon you and upon me. You have to turn away from them even if you find it difficult. Allah says, فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ Turn away from them. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ And place your trust in Allah. 
Don't say it's too difficult. It's embarrassing. They're close. I've known them since we were kids. Turn away from them and place your trust upon Allah Almighty. The fifth of these circumstances is when making peace with the enemies of Islam. Allah Almighty says, وَإِن جَنَحُوا لِسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ If they incline towards peace, then you incline to it as well. And place your trust upon Allah. You may be unsure, maybe they will break the agreement. Allah says, no, place your trust in Allah Almighty. The sixth of these scenarios, when a person's trust upon Allah Almighty needs to be great, is when you are calling to the path of Islam. When you are giving da'wah, when you are enjoining good and forbidding evil, your trust needs to be at its peak. Allah says that Shu'aib said to his people, وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ إِنْ أُرِيدُ إِلَّا الْإِصْلَاحَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتْ وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيب Prophet Shu'aib said to his people as he invited them to the path of Allah I only want to make peace as much as I can and my help is only from Allah I place my trust in Him and to him I turn in repentance, Allahu Akbar. When you are inviting to the path of Islam, Allah Almighty wants to see you pulling, putting your reliance and trust upon him. And the seventh of these circumstances is when life becomes difficult in general. Is it your child who is giving you a hard time? Is it your wealth, your prosperity, your father, your mother, your employee, your employer, your wife, your husband? Is it your health that is giving you a hard time? In that situation, Allah wants to see you relying upon Him more than any other time. Why? Because Allah says, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Say to people, O oh Muhammad, O oh Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will not be struck by anything except by that which Allah has decreed for us. He is our protector and let those who believe rely upon Allah. Let those who believe rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are seven of the many situations where a Muslim is emphasized to rely upon his creator. Although al-Muslim al-Haq, the true Muslim ya'tamidu ala Allahi fi kulli shu'unih. The true Muslim, however, relies upon Allah Almighty in all of his endeavors. This is the true Muslim, alhamdulillah, ya rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, wahdahu wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'dahu ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. We know, my brothers, that everything that we have heard just up until now is theory. It is information. And theory and information, for the most part, remains dead and passive if not given life through examples, live examples of people like you and I who applied this theory with success, this is when theory is given life and this is when we are encouraged to follow, to follow that path. Here comes your application for me and for yourself. Of individuals who, who applied tawakkul upon Allah Almighty with supreme success. And the leader of them and their chief is none other than the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Jabir that Jabir, he says, خَرَجْنَا مَعَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِذَاتِ الرِّقَاعِ فَكُنَّا إِذَا مَرَرْنَا بِشَجَرَةٍ ظَلِيلَةٍ تَرَكْنَاهَا لِلنَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ We went out with the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ on an expedition known as ذات الرقاع. Whenever we found a tree that had a lot of shade beneath it, we would leave it for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. فَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالنَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَدْ سَلَّ أَوْ قَدْ عَلَّقَ سَيْفَهُ فِي أَوْ عَلَى غُسْنِ مِنْ أَخْصَانِ أَشْجَجَرَةِ فَاخْتَرَطَهُ فَقَالَ تَخَافُنِي قَالَ لَا قَالَ مَنْ يَمْنَعُكَ مِنِّي قال الله 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 ثلاث مرات. He said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fell asleep under one of the trees as we camped. 
and he had tied his sword to one of the branches of the trees. Then a pagan managed to enter our camp without us knowing. He took the sword of the Prophet ﷺ and he placed it at the messenger ﷺ. As he lied on his back, he woke him up. He said to him, are you afraid of me? He said, no. He said, then who will protect you from me? He said, Allah. Allah. Abu Bakr al-Ismaili narrates in his Sahih a continuation. He says, فَسَقَطَ السَّيْفُ مِنْ يَدِهِ فَأَخَذَهُ فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ يَمْنَعُكَ مِنِّي فَقَالَ كُنْ خَيْرَ آخِذُ the sword fell from the hand of the pagan upon hearing the name Allah. It fell. So the Messenger Sallallahu took the sword and he placed it at the neck of the Arab. He said to him, who will protect you from me? He said, please be kind. Please be merciful. He said, will you promise me to become Muslim? He said, no. But I promise you that I will never fight you or the Muslims. So the Messenger Sallallahu let him go and the man went to his people and said, جِئْتُكُمْ مِنْ عِنْدِ خَيْرِ nas. I have come to you from the greatest of all people, Allahu Akbar. Tawakkul, tawakkul upon Allah. And take the Prophet of Allah, Hud. Hud, see, this was not exclusive to our Messenger, وسلم, but tawakkul is the characteristic of every Prophet and Messenger and every successful da'iyah. Call her to the path of Allah, because without it, your da'wah will collapse. You need to be a person of tawakkul. Should your advice be heard and accepted, should you be effective in the life of this world and the akhirah? Hud, as Allah mentions in Surah Hud, a conversation that took place between Hud, Prophet Hud and his people. They said to him vile words. قالوا, ya Hud, ma jitna bi bayina, wa ma nahnu bi tariki alihatina, wa ma nahnu laka bi mu'minin. In naqulu illa taraka baadu alihatina bi su. They said, Hud, listen. You have not brought us any clear evidence, nor are we going to leave our gods, nor do we believe in you. Rather, what we say is that our gods have possessed you with some evil, vile words to say to a prophet. But what was his response? قَالَ اشْهَدُوا قَالَ إِنِّي أُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ وَاشْهَدُوا أَنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِمَّا تُشْرِكُونَ I make you witness, and Allah Almighty, that I am free from what you associate with Allah. مِنْ دُونِهِ فَكِيدُونِي جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ لَا تُنْظِرُونَ He said, all of you, plot against me. All of you, come together. I'm not afraid of you. Plot against me. Come to me. Fulfill your plan against me. And also, don't give me any respite. Don't give me a chance. لا تُمْهِلُونِي يعني لا تعطوني فرصة في ساعة من نهار أو ليل. Right now, plot against me. What gave Prophet Hud this courage and this power to speak against the crowds who are going against him? Listen to the verse after it as Hud السلام, explains. Inni tawakkaltu ala Allah. I have relied upon Allah. I have placed my trust upon Allah. Rabbi wa Rabbikum. My Lord and your Lord. مَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ آخِذٌ بِنَاصِيَتِهَا There is no creature except that Allah controls its forelock. إِنَّ رَبِّ عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ My Lord is upon a, a straight path. This is how the messengers and prophets were. And this is how Allah Ta'ala wants every Muslim to be. Mutawakkil reliant upon his Lord. They had no craving except for that which Allah possesses. They had no ambition except Allah. They had no hope except in Allah because they understood that kingdom is His, authority is His, sovereignty is His, control and autonomy is His. Nothing happens in this universe except if He wills. And should He not will, it will never happen. Therefore, Ibrahim السلام, would say, Rabbana alayka tawakkalna wa ilayka anabna wa ilayka al -masir. Oh, our, oh, our Lord, we place our trust upon you and we repent to you. And to you will be the final return. <coughs> they also say to us, keep your eyes on the prize. It is the outcome and the reward of every aspect of every endeavor that spurs us on to continue. Therefore we ask, what are the prizes involved for a person, for a person who actualizes tawakkul, reliance upon Allah? 
in their sleep and in their wakefulness, in their day and in their night, during times of ease and prosperity, in regarding to the affairs of dunya and the akhirah. What is the prize for this individual who actualizes tawakkul to the best of his ability? It doesn't look like we will have much time to elaborate on them all, but we put our trust upon Allah. The first of these prizes, Nusra, victory against the enemies of Islam and the aggressors. This is a product of tawakkul. Allah says, إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ If you are assisted by Allah, then who can overcome you? And should Allah Almighty let go of you, who can aid you after Allah and let the believers rely upon Allah? There is a link between reliance and victory. This is the first of these prizes. We say, Mata Nasrullah. When is the victory of Allah? When we start relying truly upon Allah. Number two, protection from shaitan. This is a very heavy prize as well. Isn't it that a lot of us complain of an uphill struggle against shaitan? We say, Ya Akhi, it seems as if I am losing my battle against his whisperings and suggestions and fitna that I see. Place your trust in Allah Almighty. Allah says, Innahu laysa lahu sultanun. Allah says he has no power, shaitan has no power over those who believe and they place their trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third of these prizes is a sense of inner strength and bravery. Ya akhi, hasbi Allah. Allah is sufficient for me. Hasbi Allah. So I feel strong. I am connected with Al Jabbar. I rely upon him. A sense of inner strength and bravery. Imam Ibn Al Qayyim rahimahullah says, Walaw anna rajulan tawakkala ala Allahi haqqa tawakkulihi fi izalati jabalin min makanih wa kana ma'muran bih la azala. He says, if a person is commanded by Allah to move a mountain, from one place to another, and he places his trust upon Allah, truly he will move that mountain from its place. A sense of power and strength and reliance. This is a third of these prizes. A fourth of these prizes of reliance upon Allah Almighty, Allahu Akbar, is the love of Allah. See, we claim that we love Ar Rahman, Subhana. But the real deal is to be loved back by the Lord of the throne, Allah. That's the real deal. Allah says, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-mutawakkirin. Allah loves the people of tawakkul. A fifth of these prizes is an accurate litmus test of your iman. We ask, Ya Akhi, I need an indicator of the authenticity, of the veracity of my iman. Before I meet Allah, just in case my, my actions are rendered null, give me an indicator of my iman before I meet Him, Subhana. Assess your tawakkul and I assess mine. Because Allah Ta'ala, He says what? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Depend upon Allah. Rely upon Allah if you are believers. If you are believers. Let's see the condition. So if there is no iman, or if there is no tawakkul, what is missing? Iman is missing. This is an indicator. A sixth of these prizes, Ya Ikhwani, before the seventh and last, is, is rizq. Provisions. Rizq, provisions. Ibn Majah and at tirmidhi narrate in their sunnah on the authority of Umar that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لو أنكم, توكلوا, لو أنكم توكلتم على الله حق توكله لرزقكم كما يرزق الطير تغدو خماصا وتروح بطانا If you were to place your reliance upon Allah Almighty as it should be done, he will provide for you the same way he provides for the bird. The bird leaves in the morning hungry, it comes back in the evening with food. We have never heard of a bird that comes back in the evening hungry. It goes out hungry, it relies upon Allah, Allah feeds it. Rely upon Allah Almighty. And one of the most remarkable stories, Ya Ikhwani, I have heard with this regards, is a story of a woman who lives in the city of Mansoura in Egypt. A lady who said that I came from a very poor family. And her husband was absent for one reason or another. And she said, my daughter became very ill on one particular evening and she began to fever like never before. And I could do nothing for her. I have no money for food. We spent that evening hungry, let alone buy her medication. 
And I will pray two rak'at to Allah Almighty, two units, and call upon him and attend to my daughter. And pray and call and place my trust in him and call to my daughter. Attend to my daughter. And the hours would pass. It was now midnight, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. Then they hear a knock on the door. Who is it? It's the doctor. It's the doctor. So the lady, she puts on her hijab. She opens the door. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Where is the girl? He says. The lady, she says, she's in the room. Allahu Akbar, who sent him? He comes into the room. He checks her, prescribes for her medication, and then leaves the house. And he says, payment, please. Payment. And the woman began to cry. She said, doctor, I don't have anything to pay you with. He said, what do you mean? How rude of you. You should be ashamed of yourself. Don't you have any shyness? You call me in this late hour of the night to attend to your daughter, and you know you have no wealth to pay me. She said, Doctor, Wallahi, I didn't call you. I don't even have enough money to buy a phone. We haven't even eaten this evening. He said to her, what do you mean you didn't call me? Is this not door number such and such? She said, no, that's the door next door. The doctor, he began to weep. Because he understood that this was Allah who sent him their way. He said, please, let me go back inside. What is your story? Who are you? How did this happen? And she explained the story. He understood. So he bought them food for that evening. And he went and he purchased and delivered the medication himself. And he gave her a monthly wage as well. And I'm sure that if I ask any one of these brothers to mention a similar story, you could. When you needed Allah, and you had nobody to ask but Him, and you were given. The seventh of these prizes, my brothers and sisters, and I will finish with this in 30 seconds, is Jannah. Is Jannah. And those who believe and they do good deeds, we will enter them into rooms, elevated chambers in paradise, beneath which rivers flow. They will live there forever. And how excellent is the reward of those who do good. Who are they, O oh Allah? He says, they are those who are patient and they place their trust upon Allah. They place their trust upon Allah. And Ukasha, when he said, ask Allah to make me one of them, he was speaking about people who don't ask for ruqyah, and people who don't cauterize themselves, and people who don't follow bad omens, and people who trust and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be given access into paradise without accountability and punishment. This is something pertaining to the topic of tawakkul, and I apologize for the longevity of the khutbah.